What's going on guys, it's Noble here and today I'm bringing you episode 3 of the Last to First series. I want to firstly apologise for the long wait between the last episode, which was obviously episode 2, and this episode. That was mainly due to, well, finding it hard to actually get into a lobby with enough people to make any decent footage, but thankfully I managed to get into Athlete VG's Fry stream. I'm sure a few of you have heard of him, but if you haven't then he's effectively the most popular F1 YouTuber on YouTube in the sense that he has the most amount of subscribers and video views as far as I'm aware some, some ridiculous like over 10,000 subscribers so as you can see we got a nice full lobby early on so let's kick things off as you can see we've already made up quite a few positions after dropping to the back just on the run to turn one up into P11 already uh, this Abu Dhabi track in the Williams you can see we just have missed that red ball coming through the right hand kink and then go up the inside of the Marusha down towards this tight chicane few of the cars misjudging their braking points and getting all crossed up as we come through the left and the right and then finally again this tight left handed hairpin. We're up into P6, the American guy in the Red Bull looks like he's getting a bit out of shape on his own, I'm sure probably on his screen there was a bit of contact. But as you can see we've used up like two thirds of our cars coming down this first of the long back straights and we are into P5 as the two guys ahead of us are going side by side into this quick left right chicane splitting up the two back straights. I can see the Mercedes has been passed into that chicane and we're now trying to get the run on him as we go round the right hand side of him but he puts us in the wall, Thanks, for, thank you sir, thank you very much. As we come into this little fiddly section that is the third sector of this track, a bit of contact up ahead and the two cars directly ahead of us have been taken out so that will hand us another two positions and we are up into P3 as we chase down UGK Apocalypse. This, as I say, this third sector, very fiddly, quite a lot of 90 degree turns which make it very difficult to get the perfect line through a sequence of corners, but if you can then you can find a lot of time, as you can see, with, I'm not particularly gaining on Apocalypse too much, but he's catching massively on the leader, so we're sort of being dragged towards the leaders as we come round the final corner of the first lap. Not close enough to make any sort of attempt of a pass into turn one, so we're going to have to bide our time and hope for something happen in, on the first of the long back straights perhaps as that will be the next overtaking opportunity or real overtaking opportunity on this circuit so we're coming through this long left and then now the right getting a bit wide but just about keeping the car on the track two guys ahead going side by side into the chicane looks like the leader a bit slow ow oh, and apocalypse has spun there that's a shame for him but we'll take that all day as we come up into second place behind what looks to be a Toro Rosso in the lead. In fact, it's our good friend John B19. We are good friends from the ARL, and in fact, we'll be going to Silverstone this year, along with, I'm sure a few of you have heard of his other YouTuber, X G and Jody Mills, aka TraceMe92, from the ARL. As you can see from the footage there, it looks like a bit of a lag crash between me and John, as I didn't actually hit him on his screen, but he felt the contact as his car went flying on. But on the run of this second back straight, we've got the move done on him. We're going to hope that he's not going to come up the inside, but knowing John, he probably will just for lols. Here he comes. Oh, very close. But we just about escaped from his uh, rampaging tar or so. And I think that pretty much sums up the action for this racing season. Now cutting to the final set for the final lap. To indicate not a lot else happened in this race, but just showing you that. I do, well I hope I do actually get to the finish line in first place of this first race of the episode. Not particularly any danger of being caught through these final few corners unless we make a mistake which isn't very much possible around this sector as, as what, what people call train track curbs where you can see there you just get the wheel caught, caught in sort of the little divot on the curb and it sort of hooks your car in and you can't get out unless you put a lot of steering angle in at which point it can spit the car across the track and make your back end come out on entry to a corner which is quite annoying but we hold on to the victory and we come on to the second race of the episode which looks to be at China and we are in a four Sydney this time so we're starting in P9 we're going to let all the cars behind us go through as usual and back down to P16 another nice full lobby which is great to see a lot of lag as Athlete was hosting and he's from America and considering he live streams as well and I think most of the races in here are probably European so as you can see a lot of land going on but we're sort of picking our way through the 
many spinning cars as your Williams there. It's thankfully ghosted, otherwise that could have been the end of our race pretty quickly, but we've managed to get through that unscathed and we're up to sixth place already at the end of the first sector of the first lap, which is great. A few cars up ahead having a bit of contact. We just avoid the Red Bull who's spinning on the exit of that hairpin as we move up to P5 through this beautiful left and then right and then another double left part of the circuit. Really nice to try and get a good run through here but as you can see we're sort of being held up a little bit by these two cars up ahead who are battling and in the end make contact which boosts us up to third place already on this first lap. We've got quite a lot of our cars saved for this back straight so hopefully the guy ahead hasn't got too much of a low downfall set up on which should allow us to get a good run in. You see he's locked up after having a semi spin around that right hander on the banking. He's cut us off off the inside line so we're going to have to go around the left hand side of it which will be the outside of the hairpin but we're going to hope, or what looks to be, we're going to get the move done well before the hairpin so hopefully he won't come up the inside and spear us off the track. You see we've spotted the breaking point nicely and we've got that move covered off so up into P2 behind Athlete who is in the lead. I think not a lot really happens in this next sort of half a lap so we're probably going to skip ahead a bit and then rejoin right as the action starts to pick up again. So as you can see coming into the final sector of the second lap I think it's gone a bit deep there as we come through this tight left and then the very back long banked right hander onto the back straight. Again we've got a lot of curves saved and we're going to hope that he hasn't got a low down for setup on so we can get a good run in but it looks to be well, it looks to me that he's got a pretty decent setup on and a lot of curves saved, so we're not closing up as much as we would like. There's a little bit of lag there. We move to his inside, but knowing what the lag is like, we're going to duck out of that move, pull off to the outside, and then try and get a good run on him out of the corner, but we failed to do so. So as we come towards the final corner, we're going to try and maximise our run out of here to try and maybe launch an attack on him into turn one as the bollard goes flying there. We are on the left hand side of them, we're going to use our curves as we start the lap to try and pull off and move around the outside of turn one. You see, we're going in there side by side, he's gone a bit deep but we managed to hold on around the outside. We're still pretty much side by side as you tell by the indicator arrow as we then hold the inside line for the left hander. He tries to dive for the apex but can't as we have placed our car to block him off from doing that. Which sees us into the lead at the start of the third lap. And you see he's lost quite a lot of time due to that. I think there's a little bit of contact on his end, which is a shame, but not I didn't do anything wrong there, so we'll take that one. And as you can see, skipping on just a little bit, coming into the final sector of the final lap. We are still in P1, and I think not too close behind. I very much doubt we'll be able to launch an attack into the hairpin, which is nice, as any hairpin on any circuit in sprint mode is usually chaos is it, if there's a car within 500 miles of you, but we're gonna, we know Athlete as he's live streaming and he's usually just trying to be a clean racer when and when he can and as often as possible, so as you see, not anywhere close enough to us to make us spin or have contact or anything stupid like that, so we can just drive to the line through the final corner to take the second victory of this episode. Now I remember this race quite well, it's uh, the final race of this series and it was a cracker, it really was, it was not very worth sti sticking around for to watch. And see we're pulling off two at the right hand side, TRL Limitless doing the same, another friend of mine in this lobby which is nice to see. As we go up to P15 and lots of contact through the first sequence of corners, we just about come through and scaved, a little bit of contact with the car there which, I, uh, yeah, as you see we get the penalty for despite not doing anything wrong at all. Shame to see, but we'll carry on and we'll we'll pretty much ignore that penalty and we'll just do it first across the finish line, not the actual result. So, as this race was pretty entertaining, you see the two guys ahead going side by side, a little bit of contact. We got the inside of the car who was on the outside of the car ahead, which is giving us another position. And then coming to this section, we're going to go around the outside or try to go around the outside of a few cars as we've got Athlete ahead of us again. We picked off a place or two places now through that sequence of corners, which is great to see and then we're going to try and get a run on athlete out of this corner as he gets in a bit deep he comes across the track and we're forced onto the grass but we've still got quite a lot of our curves saved for this uphill pit straight to end the first lap so we move our engine mix up into rich whereas this is a custom race mode so we can do that today so you're going right around the outside of him on this straight we've got so much more speed than him it makes it pretty easy as we're not under pressure by the time we get to turn one. 
and we have what is Luke Spring, the F1 2012 Forum uh, Community Manager in the race as well, but looks to be having a tough time as he spins out of turn 1 and we pass him through turn 2 and out of turn 3. Coming down towards the end of the first sector we've got, I think it's John ahead of us again, and I think actually in first place is UGK Apocalypse once more. So we're going to try and spend the rest of this lap catching up to John to try and get a run on him, possibly down into turn 1 for the start of the final lap. Just important to try and hit all the apexes as cleanly as you can when you've got the clear air in straight mode as it really does make a difference to your lap times and being able to catch up to another driver as quickly as possible. You can see we're doing a relatively decent job of hitting those apexes on pretty much every corner of this lap which has really allowed us to close up quite a lot by the time we come up to this final corner. You can see we've got turned in a bit early there, difficult corner that one as the back end always wants to step out on downshifting and braking but we just about held it and then we deploy our curves coming up this hill and we're trying to get into a slipstream to maybe get close enough for a move down into turn one. It looks like he's going defensive so we're going to try something ambitious and go right around the outside of him to turn one. We've locked up a little bit as John does a good defensive job there and we can't make that position up just yet. But you see we're right behind him now coming down into the end of the first sector of the final lap. He's gone defensive once more. We're going to go into lean for this part of the race and this part of the lap particularly to save enough fuel to run rich for the final uphill stretch of the lap to give us the best opportunity of passing him if we haven't done it by that point already. And you can see we're both hitting the apexes quite nicely here so he's making it very difficult for me to get close enough to make, an, a, make a lunge on him or any sort of move. Just trying to keep him under as much pressure as possible to hope he makes a mistake. You can see we, he's driving pretty slowly through the apex of these corners and on the exit to block us from getting the undercut on him. As we then go down this left hander side by side, a little bit of grass in our tyres, as we flick the engine up into Rich coming out of this final corner. We're going to wait to use our curves for a lot later than we usually would to give us the best top speed as we get towards the lines we deploy it now. You see John's deployed his earlier so he'll be out of curves by now while we can still keep boosting as we move through his right hand side. You can see we're getting squeezed against the wall, but we just crossed the line at what was actually first place of that race, despite smashing our wheel off after the after the finish line. I don't know why I'm to Apocalypse there, but we jumped from third to first right at the very end, and that wraps things up for now, for this episode. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. Hit the like and favourite button if you did like the video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But yeah, that is it for now. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you again soon. Bye for now.